Hello and welcome. Sometimes you may want to get more details on one specific area of your sculpty, while another area of the object may be less important, and thus can be done with less faces. I will show you some approaches how to get the desired results, but let us first make a simple test. Create a plain sculpty, use the default settings, but set the number of subdivision levels to zero, so you end up with a plane of 8 times 8 faces. Let us change the face density, so that the lower left quarter of the mesh contains most of the faces. Now bake this mesh and examine the resulting sculpty in detail. After baking you can easily check your sculpt map as follows. Go to the image editor, and then navigate to Image, import a sculpty. Let us join the two objects, so we can better compare both meshes. When we go to edit mode now, then we see the expected result. The face distribution of the new sculpty looks identical to the distribution of the original object. Now let us do another experiment. Again create an initial plane similar to the previous one. Now use Ctrl, R, to create additional edge loops. Again increase the density on the lower left quarter as we did before. And then, for each edge loop that you have just created, remove another one from an area where you need less density. Select the Edge Loops with Alt, right click, and delete the loops by pressing X, and then select Edge Loop from the pop up box. At the end, the face density on the mesh looks very similar to what we had before in our first experiment. Bathe the sculpty now, and see what happens. Create the resulting sculpty from image. And again join the two objects, so we can better compare both meshes. When we now go to edit mode, then we see a very surprising result. All faces of the mesh have again the same size. So, just adding and removing edge loops apparently will not at all change the face distribution on your final sculpty. Well, in order to understand what happens here, we must take a closer look at the UV maps. Let me join all four objects, then go to edit mode for better comparison. In our first example we only modified the mesh, and left the UV map unchanged. Only the existing edge loops have been shifted around on the model, and these changes on the mesh are fully preserved on the resulting sculpty. In our next example we did not just shift the vertices but we added and removed entire edge loops. While doing that, our UV mat changed dramatically, and finally looked similar to what we have created on the mesh itself. And after baking, we again ended up with an even distribution. So we can keep as a general rule, big faces on the UV layer increase face density in the final mesh, and vice versa. Hence when baking the mesh we see that in this particular case the UV map evens out the face density, because wherever we use big faces in the mesh, we also use big faces in the UV map. So both sizes cancel out each other and we end up with an equidistant face distribution. So, how can we achieve that the shape and the face density of our model get baked into the final result? The answer is, neutralize the influence of the UV mat by making it uniform. You can do that manually if you like, by scaling and shifting the edges right on the UV mat.
had finally scaled the UV mat to bounds by navigating to UV transform scale to bounds. Or, if you prefer, you can use the UV unwrapping tools available from Blender. Let me revert the recent changes first. Then separate the mesh from the others by pressing P, Selection, and then proceed as follows. Enable, keep UV and edit mode mesh selection in sync. So we later can immediately see which UV faces correspond to which mesh faces. Go to object mode and select the separated object. Go to edit mode again and enable face selection mode. And in the image editor, select one single rectangular face on the UV map. This face will become the active face. Note that the active face is always marked with the white dotted overlay texture. It is important to choose a rectangular UV face because the subsequent UV unwrap will use the active face shape as a blueprint for all other unwrapped UV faces. And thus it will create a rectangular UV map, which is exactly what we want to get. Here we have only rectangular faces, so it does not matter which face we select, and by chance the active face is already a perfect square. Now we are ready for unwrapping. Go back to the 3D view and select all vertices. Then unwrap, follow active quads. Take care to select, even, in the pop-up box. And finally scale the UV map to the image bounds again, by navigating to, UV, transform, scale to bounds. But the easiest approach is to simply resculptify your object. Let me revert the most recent changes again. Now go to object mode, then go to, object, sculptify. Finished. All three described methods create a uniform and equidistant UV layout. And this ensures that the face density of the initial mesh also gets preserved in the final sculpty. Let us verify this now. Go to object mode. Then bake your mesh. Now create a new sculpty from the baked sculpt map. Join both objects in object mode. And again check the result in edit mode. Now the sculpty looks again similar to its source object, and we proved that by making the UV layout uniform, we also preserve the layout of the mesh in the final object. From now on, I will use the Sculptify option because it is the simplest of the described methods and it has one very convenient property which I will show you in the next part of this tutorial. See you later!